so this is where I'm starting. Paris Mountain is such a great place to start. At first I was super terrified to do solo camping. I really had to push myself really hard to do this because I knew that was one of my biggest fears. I don't know why, like everything just freaks me out. I want to get over this fear and really get used to it so that I'm comfortable being outside. Just do it. So I'm starting across the playground parking lot and I believe it's shelter three. Yes, that's where I'm gonna be starting. So some people think it's super scary to go solo hiking and, ca and camping and that it's not safe. And, and that's what I thought at first too. But if you look at the statistics, um, it's very rare when somebody gets murdered on a trail or at a campsite. Um, your chances of dying on the road oh, is so much higher than when you're out in the woods in nature. This is a awesome place to start, which is at the bottom of the mountain. It's a pretty long lake, it's about a mile around the whole lake. I'm starting right here. I'm going around the whole lake at the bottom and taking this trail up all the way up to North Lake and I'll be camping out right there. Wish me luck. It's gonna be awesome. Oh. Not lose your map. Hiking the Paris Mountain uh, is a really great place to start. All the trails are marked with different difficulties so you could really uh, plan your hikes in a way that is comfortable for you and for your level of experience which is nice they have anywhere from you know the easiest to the hardest trails and you can pick and choose and plan your trips however you like eat your breakfast drink your coffee whatever you need to do before going out it's very rare when an animal comes and attacks you and obviously like to increase your chances of survival you kind of have to have to be aggressive because if you act very weak and start running away then you only trigger the part in, in the animal to chase you and to hunt you down and you just made things worse for yourself if you don't have that personality that strong personality and then you're basically basically lowering your chances of survival recommend um, bring a bear spray. A bear spray does a really good job if you know how to use it because you don't want to spray and then stand there like an idiot. That wind will bring all that spray back into your face and then not only you will be injured you know you could possibly get attacked on top of that too. So Paris Mountain has a water source at least every mile if not every half a mile a stream a little river, a lake, a waterfall. And what's really interesting about water here is that if you pick up one of those rocks, you'll find little creatures. They're very in unique creatures that they only live in very clean water. So the water on Paris Mountain is of a superior source and very very clean so these interesting little creatures basically cannot live in water that is toxic but you'll find them if this is your first time and you want to do a shorter trail you don't have to start where i started which was i actually started on the bottom and the reason i did that is because i wanted to put some miles on and I wanted to see all the most, I believe, in my opinion, all the most beautiful views are along this trail all the way up to North Lake. The easiest trail to the North Lake and the fastest in my opinion is actually Sulphur Springs and you take that to the fire tower and then you take Canuga all the way up to North Lake. This is easily a couple hours of hiking if you really take your time. 
And the reason why you want to know the easiest trail in and out in case of an emergency, you will most likely be taking this trail out. basically drive into the park and you tell them that you want to do overnight they send you to the office once you get to the office you get to see this really cool map of the whole Paris mountain and it's it's like a 3d map so you have a good visual of what's around you and then you'll find out really quick that uh, the, the North Lake you, you'll see a lot of civilization around so the animals are not really a big deal as some people might think of course if you are further out into the wilderness it might be a bigger deal you also see that there is a cell phone tower uh, on the very top of the mountain north lake and you always have cell reception in the worst case scenario you can always if you got injured you can always call out just bring a backup battery because cell phones will die and then it's not a bad idea to have other forms of communication. We also get an emergency number in case something happens. Right there's the lake. I don't know if you can see it. It looks very small from here, but if you get there, it's actually very gigantic. But it's a long way to go. So my biggest fear in the woods would probably be rabies infected anything. When you have rabies, you become extremely aggressive. I'll be very hard to deal with. When you get rabies, you're not really following your, you know, natural instinct, which is to preserve your life and will run away. I mean, it's possible, but it's very rare for that to happen. And then my second largest, biggest fear would be a dead tree falling on my tent and killing me at night. I don't know why I'm so terrified of that. That I still need to work on. Uh, I'm still terrified of animals. At night, every little noise freaks me out. The last few times that I went up here, I was totally freaked out to the point where I barely got any sleep. Today, the challenge is actually to sleep, to actually sleep some at night and get some sleep. And that never happened before. And if that does, I'll let you know. For protection, I usually bring a neck knife that easily, you can easily pull out if you needed to in case of emergency. And then as a backup, I bring a uh, one, I bring a sog knife and then bear spray. I try to keep the bear spray really close on me at all times, like either in my pocket when I'm around camp, because you never know. Or when I'm hiking, I actually keep it in my like towards the front of the side of the pocket of my backpack so I can easily just grab it and if I see a bear and immediately deploy and you really want to have quick access to all your weapons just in case something surprises you out of the blue and that usually the way it goes this is apparently one of the best spots to camp out on Paris Mountain is campsite number two bullfrog and I'll show you why. This is why bullfrog campsite number two is the best on Paris Mountain because you actually get to see some of the sunrise. I did camp out at other campsites and the view is not like this. 
I'll probably set up my tent right there. So I spoke to a park ranger today and asked him about how the wildlife is here and he basically said that the um, he's been here for about 15 years or so and they see and they never really had a problem with wildlife attacking humans or anything like that. The park ranger basically said the last time he saw a black bear up here was about a few months ago, three or four months ago, and they've never really caused a problem for anyone. I'm gonna try and see and find a really good uh, tent, a place to set up my tent. Hopefully I could still see that beautiful views up there. I probably set it up right here. So it doesn't look too bad. I don't think anything is dead. I hope that's not a dead tree. Like, how do you know if it's dead? I don't think so. It probably look, well, something did fall off over there. So I guess it could be dead. But there's no storms today, so I guess this is it. This is the spot. Nothing else really looks, well, this is a good spot too. What would storm anything really could fall on you. I mean, look at all those dead trees. But there's no storm today, so at least that's not what their forecast is saying. I'll take my chances right over here. But at the same time, there's a slope here. So I don't know. I can't decide. You'll be all right. You got this. You can learn a lot from YouTube, surprisingly. I probably watched over a thousand videos uh, of backpacking and through hiking and how they do it. And it's a really great way, it's a really great way to learn everything you need to know about, uh, you know, uh, hiking and camping because those people are out there, the through hikers are out there doing it every day. So yes, I will take my advice from them versus preppers and uh, preppers, they may have experience but not all of them a lot of times preppers they just buy 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 but they don't really do a lot of testing with their gear um, maybe some preppers do uh, maybe a lot of preppers do i don't know but through hikers definitely have their experience of you know what kind of gear to get because they're out there doing it every single day what kind of shoes to get like what works and what does not work and what can make your trip luxurious and what can make your trip miserable. I want to test my gear in extreme weather in the coldest day in South Carolina not when it's nice and easy don't start there because that could really get you killed and I don't mind if it rains all day um, because that would be a challenge to make a campfire in fact you probably won't be able to make a campfire so you would need to rely on your gear and really fine-tune your gear so that it could handle you know extremely cold uh, days without a campfire and it's kind of nice to have that gear because it's not a good idea to depend on the campfire every time because sometimes you may not have a campfire maybe you lost your matches or your lighter and um, it's kind of nice to have a gear that can handle that. I highly recommend camping out at the North Lake instead of these shelters. These shelters are good but they're kind of cheating. <laughs> you are very close to the bathrooms and the parking lot so you're more likely to quit in the middle of the night and not really challenge yourself and challenge your gear. The biggest mistake I did is buy, 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 buy all this gear and just in case I need it in an emergency, but I've never really tested that gear. When you really need that gear and that gear fails because you failed to test that gear, 
you're in a bad situation. On my first trip of testing out my gear, I just remember the second day on my way back, I just remember how miserable I felt and that I never wanted to do that again. So ever since that first trip, I actually changed almost everything I had in my bug out bag. I switched out every single piece. And then if you have the wrong gear, which my first trip, I absolutely had the wrong gear. Our shelter looked terrible. Like, where's your sleeping setup? Right there, next to the tree. Or I'm just you're gonna sleep outside. You're gonna sleep outside, Dynic? Heck yeah. With that umbrella and everything. The stars. It's Hope supposed it to rain. rain. It's not gonna rain. You ready, Dynic? I was born ready. Check out my little pillow. Link has like Ooh, the most unwaterproof stuff you'll ever find. Not Suppos waterproof. It's supposed to. <laughs> this part is at least. <laughs> This is our little tent set up with the trekking pole. I know it looks like homeless shelter, but <laughs> it's, it's pretty legit. Is it warm in there, Harisha? Yeah, no shoes in here. Yet. Okay, are you sure it's warm? Yeah, it's very warm. we're gonna be super warm in here. There's bazillion holes in here because of the log and they made holes in the tent. <laughs> we're gonna probably, it's good ventilation, Harisha. Good. I'm like I'm afraid that whole thing is gonna be it's gonna fall apart in the morning. Lanik has your setup. Lanik looks like a beach setup. I love my setup. I'm not too worried. You love your setup, Lanik. You're going on YouTube. <laughs> and then it was so cold. It was so cold. We end up basically sitting around the fire the whole night and then leaving in the morning. And thank God it that did not rain because if did if it did pour that night, there's no way. I don't I don't even know how we would keep the fire alive. The worst case scenario, we'd probably start hiking out uh, in the middle of the night and going back home, which we were only a couple hours away. This is why I love Paris Mountain so much because even in the worst case scenario, you can always start hiking out, and and you're only a couple hours away from civilization. Here is my tent setup. Hi everyone. Welcome to my campsite. Way more professional than last video, so check it out right there. And check out my views. Also, there's my food bag. So the views here are just so stunning. In the morning, the sun rises right over there. There's nothing better in the world than waking up to a sunrise in nature and eating delicious breakfast from some private cafe. One soggy sandwich. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> There's no place I'd rather be other than here. The best part about camping is marshmallow. It's very hard to find marshmallows that are healthy or not that bad for your health. Yum, yum, yum. So if the reptilians and what's the other word? and the greys want to take over the earth so badly I thought might as well and go explore and see why earth is such a precious planet these marshmallows are so good I don't know if I'm gonna make a campfire today I don't want to spook the aliens that's what I'm out here for. Oh my god, like half of the marshmallow fell on the floor. Believing in aliens is like believing in Bigfoot for me. Like if I don't see it, does it mean it does not exist? I don't know, but I think it's a more rare occasion. It'll be nice to have an alien encounter. Obviously. Obviously I'm hoping for the good aliens to show up, not the reptilians or the greys 
people are trying to take over our earth or at least that's what some people believe and mango is a really good thing to bring What do I think about going to the bathroom in the nature? The best way I can describe it, it's a spiritual experience. You really connect with nature and it's just, just hope nothing jumps, nothing jumps up in there and because that would be really bad. So with my food bag, I put my food in these bags that are order proof so it doesn't attract bears black bears and animals and then i roll this bag up and put it in the food pole so the cool thing about Paris Mountain, they already have these food poles, which are nice. You can put your food up there. Each campsite has it, so you don't really have to worry about tying your food to the tree. And you want to make sure that your the food pole and the food is quite a distance from your tent. So that's my food on the pole. This is so that the bears don't get to it and you know other animals so I'm gonna try to gather some firewood ah, just in case it gets really cold and I can't stand it in the tent anymore so jackpot firewood It's supposed to rain pretty much all night, so glad I had nothing better to do. It's about six o'clock. The sun is pretty much gone. And it's about to get really dark. I did make a little campfire just in case. I might do a little fire before I go to bed and warm up. That's a possibility. Maybe, maybe not. Do you hear that? I think that's coyotes. <laughs> Stupid fire. Fire is not much special too. That's for sure. Just have to feed it and feed it and feed it and feed it. It's such a peace of mind. Especially when you hear those coyotes. All animals hate are scared of fire. Oh man, fire is just such a peace of mind. It's really not worth it. Not to make one. Because 
you have all this time. It's only seven o'clock and it's pitch black outside. It's really not worth not making one because it's pitch black outside and I need to kill time. There's no way I'm gonna sit in the tent the whole time. It just, I don't know, becomes miserable. It just feels like a longer night if I go to bed early. I'm not that sleepy. So, fire it is. The problem with like backpackers, they buy all of this expensive gear. I actually leave, I actually bring some Walmart gear that I don't care if I get fire holes on them because I'm here to enjoy nature and camping and campfire is a big part of camping. So I wear the most inexpensive gear around fire. This fire destroys everything. All your clothes, your shoes, everything. So I like to bring pretty cheap gear. I mean pretty light but cheap to wear around the fire. It's a good tip. Here's my campfire. My my wood is almost gone. My tent. The sky is pitch black. I mean pitch black. No moon, no stars, no nothing. Now that I think about it, an alien encounter actually sounds very creepy right now. I guess I'm gonna do some grounding since we have so much time on your hands. Ah! To get rid of all of my EMF radiation, all the electricity in the body. You don't believe me. Check out the link below. I decided to leave my camp at 5 o'clock in the morning and do some night hiking. It's gonna be raining all day and where, where there's rain there's a lot of clouds so no beautiful sunrise on the lake for me but instead I'm gonna do some night hiking. I've never done night hiking before. Should be interesting. Super excited. Looks very, very creepy. I'm starting to regret my decision. But, gotta do it at least once in your life. That's my path right there. That's my trail. Right over there. Right over there. Yes. Cannot wait until the sun comes out. I'm pretty sure night hiking is not my thing. I'm pretty positive. I don't know how people night hike, but I can't wait till the sun comes out. Oh, this is what 
night hiking looks like. I don't know which one is more dangerous to stay in one spot and wait for the sunrise or to keep on hiking. Well, if I'm hiking, at least I'm putting some miles on. It's kind of nice to have a head start. It is a long hike down, all the way down to the first lake, bottom lake. So it'll be really nice to have a to finish early. I couldn't sleep anyway. I did sleep for a couple hours. I stayed up with the campfire all the way till one or so. And then I slept for a couple hours. And then look at that. The rain was beating really hard and I couldn't sleep anyways because of the sound. So I packed up and decided to hike out early. And now I'm a little freaked out. Like who does that? All right. You can tell the sun is coming out a little bit. It's still a little dark. That's my path right there. It's been nothing but rain. It's been nothing but rain all the way down. If I ever end up in a bad situation and I have to go to the woods and stay there for a couple weeks. It has happened in history before to many individuals, so this is not crazy thinking. I know I would be okay by myself. That just gives me a peace of mind. Knowing that I know my gear, I tested my gear, and I was absolutely okay by myself. I know I'm gonna be okay because I went through the basics. In an emergency situation, you really don't want to be worried about the basics. Like, what if you left, you know, food crumbs underneath your pillow? And an uneducated person could absolutely do that or have food crumbs all over themselves, which can attract bears and all kinds of animals into your tent and can put you in a dangerous situation. I think it's very important to really have the basics down so that you're not worried about things like that and so that you're not easily stressed or easily panicked because when you're panicked you make wrong decisions and wrong decisions can get you killed you know am i pushing myself too far for no reason and for some people it is and for some people this is nothing they do it all the time like through hikers they do night hiking all the time and they do solo camping all the time and it's not a big deal at all. But for some people it's the scariest thing in the world and it's just, I think those people should challenge themselves and prepare for it and do it. And if anything horrible would ever happen and you had to bug out, uh, you wouldn't be dependent on anybody else because you've done it before and it's just such a such a great feeling there's many reasons why people do it that is my reason i i'm doing it for you know to get my survival skills up and i'm really bad about buying 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 and never really testing anything so this is good for me to go out and actually do it thank you for watching guys i hope you guys learned something and let me know in the comment section what is your biggest fear in the woods if you were to go solo camping or solo night hiking?